Good morning, church family. I hope you're all doing well this morning. Uh, those of you who helped out with VBS this week, I hope you're able to find a little bit of rest between Friday and this morning. But um, I just want to welcome everyone here this morning, uh, especially those of you who are visiting with us. Welcome those who are watching us online as well. If you are visiting with us for the first time, we'd love to get to know you a little bit more, answer any questions you might have, hear your feedback even. Um, and so there's two ways that you can do that. You can fill out one of the Connect cards in the seat back pocket in front of you, uh, or you can text the word uh, CBC Guest to the number 94000, and you can do that whole Connect card process uh, digitally, and it'll be sent by email to our, our office. We're super excited to be uh, worshiping with you this morning, and we have only one announcement, and so it's going to be our final VBS announcement for this year until next summer. It's going to be our recap, so I want to invite up Kathy and Aaron. Good morning. Uh, first, I want to thank you all for praying for us. Um, without those prayers, this would not have been as successful as it was. We had 60 children, and it was really a wonderful week. We had a couple of bumps, which I know some of you are aware of, but you prayed us through it, and it was um, a very, very successful week. The best part for me was the fact that 80% of those children, maybe more, were not our church family. So that means we were reaching out into the community, and so and that's what the goal is, right? So we were really, really excited about that, to see all those children we did not know and had not seen before. So that was fantastic. We collected um, school supplies with the boys and girls to donate to the Salvation Army. We got 146 different school supplies that we'll be able to take that Ministry of Vacation Bible School and pass it on forward with um, helping children in Worcester that I, I have um, a greater need. So it was really a wonderful week. We are going to watch a video, a little recap. So I hope you can enjoy that. You'll be able to see the bits and pieces and how it all came together. And after you watch it, I want you to think, how can I get involved in children's ministries? Because this is a joy that has no, no level to, that you can reach. So it's, it's just amazing. I'm just up here to nod. <laughs> all right, so she'll speak and, next. And to say thank you to all of our volunteers. And the ones that are in St. Lucia right now can't hear me. Oh, sorry, instead of bending, I'll, yeah. Can't hear me, but um, we're so grateful for all of you. And for those that gave their entire week last week and then went on a missions trip to do it again this week, that's, it's awesome. And I'm so grateful for them and proud of them. Thank you all. All right. Here's the recap. <laughs> Let's get the juices flowing, imaginations going. There's so much in store. It's time to be creative, incredibly innovative. So much to explore. 
If anyone would like me to send them the link for the sparkly jacket I wore all week, I can do that, so let me know. Um, what a great week. Don't you all wish you were there? Yes. Well, you will have so many more opportunities to join us for Vacation Bible School because we do it every year. <laughs> and we also have lots of children's ministries that we want to be happening that might not be happening right now, but we, we really want them to be. And you have an opportunity to help minister to children. So if you are interested in being a part of that, please see I don't know, us, Trevor, <laughs> Bill Sullivan Sr., um, see somebody, because it's super, super important. Um, we do have somebody that offered to do a special VBS reunion children's church today. Um, Kim Stevens is downstairs in the Blue Rug Room, and any children who are pre-K through fifth grade can go join her for that. I'm looking at my only two, really only two, ch all right, we need more children in this church. <laughs> We need children's ministries so we can get more children. So whoever is here that is that age, no, Jacob, you cannot go. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much for praying us through the week. And uh, that's all I've got. <laughs> Jacob, isn't it fun when your mom gets up and does an announcement? Yeah. <laughs> you think you're safe up here, but <clears throat> it really was an amazing week. Um, and I, this was the first time I actually got to stay in the church and actually see things happen. It was, it was really wonderful, the kids getting to hear God's word, and it was a real blessing. So if you want to bow with me with a, for a quick word of prayer as we enter into worship this morning. Lord, we just come before you and we thank you for everything you've been doing this week here in this church, for how you've used us as a church to minister to all those kids from out in the community, Lord. Um, we thank you for that opportunity. We pray that we made your love known as it should be, that your gospel was presented in full truth, which I know it was. And we thank you for that, Lord. We come before you this morning now to bring ourselves before the cross to open up our hearts, to worship you, to bring you the glory that you so deserve. And it's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. If you'd stand and join us for worship.
Our scripture this morning comes from Ecclesiastes 12, 1 through 8. And as always, the pew Bibles in front of you or your phones or on the screen behind me, please follow along. Remember your creator in the days of your youth, before the days of your trouble come and the years approach when you will say, I find no pleasure in them. Before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars grow dark, 
and the clouds return after the rain. When the keepers of the house tremble and the strong men stoop, when the grinders cease because they are few and those looking through the windows grow dim, when the doors to the street are closed and the sound of grinding fades, when people rise up at the sound of birds but all their songs grow faint, when people are afraid of heights and of dangers in the streets, when the almond tree blossoms and the grasshopper drags itself along and desire no longer is stirred. Then people go to their eternal homes and mourners go about the streets. Remember him before the silver cord is severed and the golden bowl is broken, before the pitcher is shattered at the spring and the wheel broken at the well, and the dust returns to the ground it came from, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Everything is meaningless. This is the word of our Lord. Can I encourage you to keep your Bibles open uh, if you have that passage, and then if not, I encourage you to grab a Bible from in front of you as we'll be going through the uh, 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 passage there that we just read. I'm on. Batteries coming up. That was providential. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, you got your Bibles open, I hope. Okay, great. Uh, let's see, where was I? The place on Friday night after vacation Bible school was electric. It was really an awesome closing program, and uh, it, it looks like it was just an awesome week. So we thank God for that. Uh, would you join me in a word of prayer? Lord, you have been with us throughout all generations. Before you created the universe, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You made the human race out of the dust of the earth, and there comes a time when you say, return to dust, you mortals. There comes a time when you sweep people away in the sleep of death, aware of all that we have done and you are aware of all that we have done over the course of our lives. All our days pass away and we finish our years with a moan. We are given 70 years or 80 if you give us the strength. And those years are filled with many blessings but they're also filled with many troubles and sorrows. They quickly pass and we fly away. So please, Lord, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Have compassion on us as we experience this earthly pilgrimage. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. May your favor rest on us. Help us to make a difference for you in the world while we are here. And we thank you for the difference that we were able to make this week in planting seeds among children about you being the creator and this creation being about you and that you'll make a masterpiece out of each and every one of our lives if we surrender ourselves to you. We pray for our St. Lucia team as they go down with the message of the gospel as they adjust to their surroundings, some of them for the first time in a developing world, and uh, it's uh, quite a psychological adjustment that must be undergone. And we just pray that you'll bless them in it all and that you'll work in their lives and bring them back as different people than when they left and work through them into the lives of the people on St. Lucia. And we pray for our transition team here at home that you'll continue to give us wisdom and, uh, and uh, just uh, direction from you that comes from the Holy Spirit himself, uh, working and guiding our church into 
our future. We do thank you for your word, for the way that Christ is exalted and known through your word, for the satisfaction you bring us through your word. And we just pray that the Holy Spirit will fill me with power and wisdom, help me to communicate clearly that your people may be refreshed or convicted or edified or comforted or strengthened for the journey that lies ahead, whatever their particular needs are, Lord. Use these next few moments, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I was a teenager at the time that Jesus Christ got a hold of my life, and, uh, uh, and I had this wonderful little country church that loved me and discipled me in Christ, and I'm so thankful for them. Uh, there was one couple in the church, however, uh, Jake and Donna, who took a special interest in me, had me over to their home, had me over for meals, uh, let me get really close to their lives and see their lives. And coming out of a dysfunctional family, uh, they were kind of like a model of functionality uh, to me. And they influenced my life greatly. They met when they were uh, teenagers, and they were on a traveling music team that went around with an evangelist. The evangelist would preach. They would do music. Uh, related to it, and that's where they met. And one thing they said to me one night at dinner was, George, you know, give all your energy to Christ while you're young uh, because, you know, uh, life changes. Uh, you, you start to get jobs. You start to get mortgages. You get married. You got children. You got all these responsibilities in life, and you're not as free to serve the Lord uh, as you are in your uh, teen years. And so um, I took them to heart and I uh, gave myself seriously to the Lord and I uh, served the Lord to the best of my ability. And uh, I remembered my Creator in the days of my youth. But then one Sunday, I was preaching at a, a youth Sunday uh, service and I thought, well, I'm going to preach on remember your Creator in the days of your youth. And what I, uh, so I decided to study the Ecclesiastes passage and look carefully at its context and everything like that. And I had an eye-opening uh, experience. So look at verse 1. Uh, it, it, it says, remember your creator in the days of your youth. I want us to think for just a moment about that word remember, and then I want us to think for a few moments about that word youth. Uh, remember is just simply, you know, remember that God created you and he created you not so you could live on this earth and do anything that you want to do. He created you for his purposes. Uh, that's why you're alive. That's why you're here. Uh, and, uh, and so remember that. As Colossians uh, 1.16 says, speaking uh, of God the Son, he says, all things were created by him and for him. And so remember that. that that's what the author of Ecclesiastes wants us to remember. And then let's think about that word youth for just a moment because the first thought that usually comes to our mind is children and teenagers, right? Um, but this is where I made my discovery uh, that it includes middle-aged people and it includes senior adults. Now, let me explain. The, the key word that gave me that insight is the word before. Now, notice in verse 1, Remember your creator in the days of your youth before the days of trouble come. And, uh, and then in verse 2, before the sun and light and moon and stars are darkened. And verse 6, before the silver cord is snapped. In other words, remember that God is your creator and that you exist for his purposes um, before old age causes you to lose health and mobility and energy. That's what the passage is teaching us. So look at verse 2. It says, remember your creator in the days of your youth before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars are darkened. Now, I studied some commentaries on these things, 
and it's talking about before old age sets in, and uh, what, what do you suppose uh, uh, that is metaphorically uh, referring to? I'll give you a clue because it'll help you to uh, understand some of the other metaphors that are coming up. Uh, it's talking about failing eyesight. Cataracts, uh, uh, macular degeneration, uh, but even some of you as senior adults, you have trouble seeing as well at nighttime uh, as you did when you were younger and so forth, and floaters and all these things. So it's talking about growing old and your sight beginning to diminish. So now with that in mind, verse 3, remember your creator in the days of your youth before the day when the guards of the house tremble. All right, it's talking about, you know, growing old and, and not feeling as secure because you're no longer as strong and robust as you, you know, once were. There was no police force back in this day. Uh, the man of the house was the guard of the house, the keeper of the house, the security of the house. Uh, he had to defend his family. And, uh, you know, as we grow older, we, we, we're not, we don't have the strength to, to punch another person's lights out like we once did. Uh, we, we, uh, uh, now, I, I realize a gun can be a great equalizer, but, um, uh, but this, they, they didn't go toting guns back in these days. Uh, so this is talking about the insecurity that we feel as we weaken and as we age. And by the way, in Massachusetts, if a person strikes a senior adult, fines or penalties are doubled. So, you know, I mean, I'm going to be like, you know, hey, come on, buddy, bring it on, <laughs> you know. All right, verse 3 Remember your creator in the days of your youth before the strong men are bent. So as we grow older and our muscles weaken, the weight of our skeleton begins to hunch us over a little bit. And so you see a lot of elderly walking like this. And then uh, verse 3 also. Remember your creator in the days of your youth before the women who grind cease working because they are few. Any guesses? Yeah. Those are the grinders. And, you know, I mean, we have dental care. Uh, and if we lose a tooth, they can put another one in there nowadays. And, you know, but think about it. We've only been brushing teeth for about the last 200 years. Uh, you know, George Washington walked around with his uh, wooden... Uh, uh, dentures, uh, you know, um, I mean, we're very fortunate in that way, and I don't know what it's like in St. Lucia, because I haven't been there, but I've been to many developing nations, and you see people all the time who don't have teeth because they don't have the dental care uh, that we have, and they didn't back in these Bible days, and so, you know, uh, before the, you lose those grinders, uh, you know, serve the Lord. And then, what about this one, verse 4? Remember your Creator in the days of your youth before the doors on the street are shut and the sound of the grinding, grinding is low. Any guesses? Yep, you got it. Uh, loss of hearing and... Um, you know, that affects a lot of people, right? And today we have hearing aids, but um, when growing up, I always had to yell, or my dad used to yell at me, now I yell at him. Uh, verse 4, remember your creator in the days of your youth before one rises up at the sound of a bird. As we age, a lot of us experience interference with our sleep. And, uh, you know, and a lot of senior adults are early risers uh, for that reason. 
And then remember your creator in verse 5. In the days of your youth, before one is afraid of heights and terrors are in the road. You know, we, we lose a lot of our balance as we age. Um, and uh, that's what uh, commentators think that refers to. Um, uh, I know that um, my wife doesn't want me to get on the roof anymore like I used to, to clean the gutters and so forth. Uh, she's afraid I'm going to lose my balance or whatever. Uh, Jake that I mentioned as the one that mentored me, um, he um, was fixing his house up for his uh, old age because he wanted to hopefully die in that house. And he was on the roof and a bunch of hornets came out, started stinging him. He tumbled down and became a quadriplegic, couldn't even talk. And I got to see him, I don't know, it's some time ago now, but um, you know, he could hear, but he couldn't talk. And I just thanked him so much for his influence in my life. And uh, boy, the biggest crocodile tear I ever saw come out of an eye came out of him that day. But, um, you know, we, we lose some of our balance and, you know, like we have to watch where we put our feet. Uh, again, I, and I don't mean to keep referring to my father, but that's just where my life is at right now, walking with him and he catches it on rugs and, um, you know, doesn't see the dips in uh, sidewalks and so forth. And, uh, you know, it's so those are the terrors of the, the road. Um, so then verse 5, uh, remember your creator in the days of your youth before the almond tree blossoms. Any guesses? Yeah, white hair. Uh, because, uh, um, you know, uh, when the almond tree blossoms, it just looks like one big white bush. And uh, so it's talking about the graying of our hair. And then remember your creator in verse 5, in the days of your youth before... The grasshopper drags itself along, you know. You, you often see that, uh, I don't know, it's probably not respectful, the old man shuffle, that's what I call it. Uh, um, and, you know, you, you get stiff, right? I mean, again, I'm, I'm 68, and we just put on about 2,500 miles over the last uh, couple of weeks. And uh, every time I get out of the car, I feel like my legs died, like rigor mortis was setting in, starting from the, from the bottom up and moving upwards, and I'm glad I got out of the car before it got any further, you know? <laughs> All right, and then verse 5 also, remember your Creator in the days of your youth, before desire fails, and some take this as sexual desire, it could be, or it could just be the uh, desire of ambitious goals. You know, you don't see too many 70-year-olds saying, I think I'm going to start a company, employ 200 people, you know. Um, you know, you start to realize the timetable is getting limited and you don't have the energy that you once did. And so if we're catching what Solomon is saying here, um, you know, youth in this passage is not an age or a stage. It's a diminishing quality of life in much the way that a battery, um, you know, starts out with a full life battery and eventually it's, you know, gets lower and lower and finally it is depleted and, uh, and no longer useful. So as long as you can be useful, be useful. Uh, give the Lord whatever you've got left in the battery. Give the Lord whatever you've got left uh, in the tank. Eventually, uh, our aging and our failing health will lead to uh, death. As it says in verse 5, all must go to their eternal home, and the mourners will go about the streets. In other words, there'll be people mourning your death in the, the streets, and eventually we all succumb to death. Uh, there's a poem, one life will soon be passed, and only what's done for Christ will last. And so uh, we, uh, I would just counsel our young people here. Uh, I know sometimes 
you get the feeling from uh, our, the way we do church that uh, church is for older people. And maybe you'll be a part of it when you're older and, and, and maybe you won't. Maybe Christianity seems like something that's for older people. This is for every person. And this is for young people too. And young people can do great things for God when they surrender their lives to him. And uh, the beauty about surrendering it in your youth is that as you practice it and you seek to live each day for the Lord, it becomes your habit. And uh, then you, you follow the Lord all the days of your life. But then for those that uh, are middle-aged and senior adults, uh, you know, I don't want this passage to seem like it's morbid about aging. Uh, there are certainly challenges that come along with aging, but um, George MacDonald wrote that uh, age is not all decay, it is the ripening, the swelling of the fresh life within. And that reminds me of what Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 16, where he said, we do not lose heart, though, the, uh, outward, though outwardly we are wasting away, our body uh, is uh, dealing with its mortality, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. And uh, aging has many benefits, and I'm not talking about, um, you know, passes to the national parks or uh, discount, uh, discounted coffee at McDonald's. Um, I'm, I'm t and, and you know what I found out yesterday? It, just yesterday I found this out. This is such a great thing about being over 65, is that at the RMV, did you know that they have special hours for senior adults? And it's easier to get into than uh, the regular time. So just for what that's worth to you, um, I have an appointment on Wednesday. I'll see if it works out, and I'll let you know. But. Uh, so, yeah, but I'm not talking about those kind of benefits. Uh, the downside is, yeah, our bodies are losing energy, they're weakening, we're, we're losing health, uh, and so forth. But inwardly, uh, the upside is that we become much richer with our experiences in life. Ten years of life makes a huge difference in people's perspectives. And when we are walking with Christ and incorporating him into the details of our daily lives, 10 years is a lot. And uh, we keep growing and growing and growing. And, um, and that's the upside of growing older. Now, I want to encourage all of us to give ourselves to the Lord to whatever degree of youthful energy we have left or to whatever we have left in the tank and so forth. But let me just say a word about your coming pastor when, when that day comes. Um, I hope that none of you are sitting there thinking like, yeah, well, you know, I, we, we need a pastor to turn this place around. Um, well, your pastor needs your help to turn this place around. No one's going to come in here and be your savior. And, uh, you know, uh, we uh, uh, will have, he, he will need the energy that you have, regardless of whether you're a teen or you're a middle-aged adult or a senior adult. And we're not asking you to do what you did in the past. We, we lose energy. We, we lose health. We lose mobility. Uh, these things are uh, a reality of life. But if you think that just pastor is going to come in here and be able to, you know, do it all, uh, then uh, we're, well, the chances are as great of that happening as uh, the catching of a Hail Mary pass in the NFL. You know how many, uh, about 4% of Hail Mary passes in the uh, NFL are caught. And that's about the chance, your chances of having a pastor do it alone. He's going to need each of you and whatever you have left in the tank. And we re he, God understands 
this aging thing. I mean, he created us. He, he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. He doesn't expect us to give more than we're capable of giving, but he does expect us to give what we have. And doing church is a team sport. So sometimes senior adults feel like, well, I'm in the retirement years of life now. It's time for the young people to take the church. Um, my best years are behind me, but still we can give the Lord whatever we have left in the tank. There are three categories of senior adults. There's the go-go's. Those are the people that still have health and energy and, and mobility, and they can go, 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 go. Then there's the slow goes. The slow goes are, you know, starting to face some of those uh, limitations that, that come with aging. And then there's the no goes. Uh, and so whatever category we're in, uh, let's remember that we are here to live for Christ. We may not be able to serve the Lord with the same vigor and vim that we once had, but we can serve the Lord with what we do have. So ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, remember your creator in the days of your youth. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. Never be lacking in zeal but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Can anyone say amen? amen? So, Lord, we just present ourselves to you afresh and anew. We thank you for your understanding of where we are at in life, and we just pray that you'll help us to give of whatever we have left in the tank in order that your work might advance in this world including advancing in and through our church. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. If you'd stand and join us as we worship the Lord again. Jordan. 
that lay between us. I'll hide the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name. And uh, we have many pleasures, and the Lord has given us many pleasures and many things to enjoy uh, in this world. But we have to always remember that there is a seriousness to this life. There is a seriousness to the pilgrimage that we are uh, 
passing through. And so uh, if there's anyone here who has never had a revelation of who Jesus Christ was and um, not come to him for your salvation and you're not sure how to get right with God, contact me through any means. And I would uh, love to talk with you and share with you uh, those first steps that you can be taking uh, to uh, live the life that the Lord wants us to live. And uh, I will be up here too if anyone needs to uh, chat with me. I'll linger for a while. Um, you know, uh, don't be afraid to come up. Uh, I'll pray with you, whatever the need is. But uh, I'll, I'm going to start hanging around the front here for a while, and uh, you just come if you have such a need. So may the Lord bless you. And brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Go in peace and enjoy your walk with Christ this week. Amen. Amen.